Hey everybody, what's going on? Helmite here, bringing you another video from Grab the Lantern today. It's patch day, the patch 7.1 notes have just hit the boards, and I'm going to be going through those with another patch note rundown and letting you guys know the most important changes in this coming patch. Now, it has been a long time since we've had a patch, so we have a decent amount to go through today. I'll try to get through the most important changes as quickly as I can, so that all of you guys know exactly what's going on in this patch. Now, to start things off with, we are going to be talking about Camille, the most recent champion to join the game. Now, Camille's been a little bit overpowered recently, if you consider 57% win rate to be overpowered, so she's naturally getting some nerfs. Now, currently, Riot's okay with her ability to duel and her ability to reach the backline. However, what isn't okay is the fact that Camille is too tanky, and it feels like you can't fight her because she does too much damage while being too tanky. The changes today are aimed at reducing that. So, she's uh, her passive adaptive defenses has a lower duration at pretty much all levels, and she also gains less HP per level. Additionally, uh, the knockback on Hextech Ultimatum has been overall reduced. So if you're an ally that's been pushed away by the Ultimatum, you have a lot less time to wait before you can run in to help your ulted friend. I think these are generally good nerfs. We'll see if it's going to be that effective at reducing Camille's overall effectiveness, but I think it's a step in the right direction at the very least. Next up, Karma nerfs. Karma's been a very good generalist support. She kind of does everything you want out of a support, and that's not really that cool because it's crowding out a lot of other options. So, Karma's getting some changes. First, she's going to be doing less damage on Focused Resolve, her W. Uh, the ticks are now at the beginning and end of the effect instead of having one in the middle as well. So, Karma has to be has to complete the tether if she wants to do as much damage as she did before. Additionally, she now has less base shield on Inspire. This means that she's going to have to build a lot more AP, and she'll be shielding for a lot more health when she gets late in the game, not as much early. Kennen is also getting nerfed in this patch. He's been a very good top laner for a long time and crowding out a lot of really good top laners because of his insane ult damage in the mid game. Kennen doesn't really need his full kit to kill you, he pretty much just presses R. Riot's changed it, so now his ult is mostly backloaded damage. What this means is that Kennen will be dealing ultimately more damage to you with Slicing Maelstrom if he keeps you in it for the full duration. However, he'll be dealing less damage if you're able to get away from it more quickly. So, I think overall this is a good change, we'll, and it means that good Kennens, who can keep people in his ult duration for the whole time, will be really, really good, and Kennens that are just playing Kennen because they think Kennen's bullshit will be doing a lot less damage. Lee Sin is also getting nerfed. Praise the Lord. Lee Sin's been absolutely ridiculous for a long, long time. He's needed nerfs, and Riot is nerfing him. Unfortunately, it's a bit of love taps more than what I'd like to actually see them do, but I'll take it. Uh, first, they bug fixed his E, so it no longer reveals invisible units, because invisible units are supposed to be invisible forever. They cannot be revealed. The other thing is his ult now deals less damage. I believe it's down 50 points, 150 points, sorry, at max rank. So Lee Sin's ult will still be good for its insane peel and utility and knockback, but it won't be as good as just straight up executing people, which is really nice because his QQR was a pretty good combo, to put it lightly. Next up, Lucian is getting buffed. He's been suffering a little bit in the preseason with the armor pen changes to lethality from flat armor pen. And so he's getting a bit, uh, a couple extra buffs tossed his way to help him out in the preseason. Lucian's passive damage is going up early on in the game, and his piercing light damage is also going up by an appreciable amount. So Lucian will be a little bit stronger in this patch. Nothing too insane, but hopefully it's enough to bring him back into the meta. Poppy is also getting nerfed. Again, praise the lord. Poppy has been pretty much unkillable for these last few patches because of her passive shield and Courage of the Colossus stacking just so nicely and giving her an absolutely insane amount of shield on top of her fantastic defenses. Her defenses aren't really getting nerfed, but she is going to have more windows of opportunity to punish her. The Iron Ambassador's shield duration is down to 3 seconds from 5, meaning it'll wear off much quicker and she'll have more downtime before it's available again. And her ult damage on the quick cast has been greatly reduced. I believe it was cut in half at max rank. So Poppy will be doing generally less damage and will be a little less tanky, so you can actually chew through her health bar and not her expendable shields. Rise is getting nerfed as well. Rise is another champion who's been very popular recently, and a lot of that was because he is good late. He's supposed to scale late and do an insane amount of damage late game, but unfortunately, he's getting there way too consistently because of the utility his overload gives him. He gets a giant shield and a ton of speed, and that makes it really, really difficult to punish Rise in the early game. 
Correspondingly, his overload has been nerfed. The shield, the shield strength has been reduced by an appreciable amount, and he also gains less movement speed. This means he's going to be a lot more early, uh, a lot more vulnerable early on, so you can actually punish him and prevent him from spiking in the late game. In a similar vein, Syndra is getting nerfed as well. Right now, her late game is supposed to be good, but it's pretty much an inevitability for her to reach there because of how good her early game is. She's also very consistent. With the Force of Will's ability to pick up three spheres, she can get a, a seven-sphere uh, unleashed power way too easily, and that's just annihilating people's health bars. So, right, I've changed it. Force of Will no longer can pick up three spheres. Instead, when it reaches max rank, it will deal bonus true damage when it hits an enemy. This looks insane, but the thing about it is she can no longer pick up those bonus spheres, so her ult will be dealing less damage. Unleashed Power's cooldown is also up to 120 seconds at rank 1, and I believe it's also a higher cooldown at rank 2 than it was before. So Cinder will have to be a lot more careful about Unleashed Power, and it'll make her early game less consistent so people have more time to punish her. Moving on to items, Zrot Portal is the only item of note here today, and that is also receiving a few nerfs. Currently, it's really, really good in just sieging in general, and at shoving a wave in general, and that's not really its intended function. Zrot Portal was supposed to make tanks who push a lot better at split pushing by giving them a little bit more damage and wave clear when they're in the top lane. Someone like Malphite comes to mind. So... These changes are directed at forcing the tank who placed the Zrot Portal to stay in the lane with the Zrot Portal as opposed to just kind of leaving it in a bush and letting it auto-shove the wave. The overall duration that the minions will travel for has been reduced, they don't gain bonus health, and they deal a little bit more damage. The duration on Zrot Portal has also been reduced, so you'll have a lot more windows of opportunity to punish it while it's down. Finally, the jungle is being changed. Everyone knows how crazy the jungle has been recently. I kind of touched on it in my podcast yesterday. And naturally, Riot has targeted it as a place for changes that should hopefully help AD carries feel a little bit better about themselves. Less XP is, is going to be there across the board, meaning that junglers will have to clear more camps. Whereas before it took them four camps to reach level four, now it will take them six camps to reach level four. This is going to be a huge change as junglers will have to spend a lot more time farming and less time ganking poor hapless bottom laners. So, this means that bottom laners will have more time to farm safely and not get killed immediately. I think this is probably a good change, and it does a lot to help out junglers in these situations, or AD carries in these situations while reducing the power of the jungle, which has been, frankly, dictating the pace of games. Those are all the biggest changes. Obviously, we have a lot more on the horizon, including the Warwick rework, which I'll be getting to in an article later today. But I thank you guys so very much for watching uh, this video. I hope you guys found it uh, enjoyable. Let me know what changes you thought were the most important in the comments down below. And feel free to hit that subscribe button, as it does help me in what I do. Once again, thank you guys so very much for watching, and I will talk to you all later.